Hey there, fellas. You guys remember this vehicle, right? We converted the thing to four-wheel drive like literally yesterday. We drove around until the transfer case took a shed. Today's episode is not going to be about restoring the four-wheel drive system, oh no. But we're not scrapping the car either. We will make it run again, though it is going to be a slightly different animal. But the current motor that we're running in this car... Well, it's safe to say that we won't need it anymore, but simply removing it and throwing it in the trash, that's totally out of character for us, which is why we'll do a few things to it instead. A bunch of people requested we try a certain experiment, namely replacing the crankshaft bearings with a leather belt. I've got that leather belt right here. And now we find out whether an engine will even run with a leather belt instead of crankshaft bearings. I know very well where this is coming from. So back in the 90s, when spare parts were in scarce supply, they say that people even sold cars with this sort of leather belt mod done to them. And today we find out whether that myth is actually true. Let's do this. Can you replace crankshaft bearings with a military belt? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So here's the situation. We've removed one of the caps. Let me just extract the bearing. What do we got here? Looks okay to me. Now here's what we have to do. The idea is to cut out a piece of belt the same width as the bearing. But I think we'd be better off cutting out a piece the same width as the piston rod to keep the belt from sliding. I mean, yeah, it's still gonna have a bit of leeway, but... Yeah, that seems like the way to go. We've already inspected the belt, bitten it, so to speak, scorched it with a lighter. We've tried a few things, and it appears to be real leather. Make an incision over here. Excellent. We're gonna need a piece with a width of 25 mil. Right, okay, you've convinced me. Let's try... yeah, try that. Cutting the belt in half. This is one long-ass belt. There's plenty to go around. <laughs> Beautiful. As for how long it needs to be, I reckon we should just wrap it all the way around the crankshaft. No point splitting it in two. It should just be one continuous piece, with just the one seam. Now which side should we lay onto the crank? This one, I think. It depends on which side is more slippery. Well, this side is quite obviously... Maybe a bit of oil will help with that. You know what? Yeah, the pores should actually soak up the oil and make this side pretty slippery. Of all the stuff I've tried, man, wooden pistons and whatnot. But these leather bearings are a first. And there you have the width of the crankshaft journal. See that? So here's what's up. We've tightened up the belt and uh, we have no experience in replacing bearings with belt. As you can see, we've got some retainers going. This here is starting to look like a piece of rag. Apparently there wasn't enough pressure on the lower part. In any case, the belt is slightly thicker. We tried, but we couldn't spin the crank. So we removed the belt in the meantime. And I'm glad we did. So what did we see upon removal? I guess we'd be better off soaking some rawhide leather in oil, but where do we find that stuff? I say we go ahead and try soaking everything we've already cut up in some oil. Get everything to swell. Yeah, the leather is going to be swollen after soaking up a bit of oil. But any excess oil will be expelled once we tighten everything down. And the first time we turn the engine over is going to be the make or break moment. So basically we need to get it moving. After that I reckon it should have much less trouble rotating.
We fitted all four rods with some leather bearings. We're aware that nobody does that, or ever did, or ever will. Anyway, this created a problem. We still have yet to start the engine, of course, so the belt is quite a bit thicker than those bearings. And when you attach those caps, it's a very tight fit. The starter motor, it's squeaking and screeching, but it does seem to be turning the engine over. Oh man, listen to that screech. I think that's the leather. Oh yeah, definitely. We need to get some lubrication going pronto. Let's go ahead and install the sump. Fill the motor with some oil and try firing it up. Right, fellas, so after putting all of this together and installing four bearings made from leather belt, the engine might have started with just three, but after throwing a fourth one into the mix, I mean, it was struggling even before that. The starter motor wasn't capable of turning over the engine, which is why we were pushing the car back and forth. Even if you dump the clutch in third and fourth gear, the wheels lock up, since the motor won't let them rotate, but we were able to free the engine up a bit. Now the starter motor is spinning quite happily, and if that's the case, it's time to let her rip. Hang on! Dude, stop! It does actually try to fire up when you let off the ignition. Wait! That's it! I see smoke. That's nice. There's smoke coming from the starter motor. We are definitely breaking something today. <laughs> well, it's running at least. Okay. It works. This engine is about to take a serious pounding, with two wheels rotating at the same rate. Five minutes later. Oh man, it is barely hanging in there. Something has gone horribly wrong. We've got an oil pressure light on the dashboard, and that knocking is coming from the engine. That's not right. I'll go ahead and switch it off. We've lost all oil pressure. I'm pretty sure that's the rod bearing making that noise. But without oil pressure, we might be looking at seized up main bearings. The cam isn't that big of an issue, but we definitely run the risk of wrecking the main bearings. Okay, fellas, we've removed the oil pan, and here's what we're looking at. There are actually a few things wrong with this picture. So we made each makeshift bearing using one strip of leather belt, while the factory bearings are two separate pieces. Anyway, so the belt is obviously thicker than the original metal bearings. The leather would actually wrinkle up and get lodged between the rod and the cap. And as a result, yeah, we were able to tighten it all down, but the leather getting stuck between the rod and the cap led to it sort of increasing in size, if that makes sense. But even that wasn't the main problem. I mean, okay, the belt was quite a bit thicker to begin with, 
But apparently when under load, while the engine was running, it was either sped out or, I don't know, washed out somehow? Though I can't see how that's even possible. Anyway, the nut on one of the rods went a bit loose. And this is what happened to the bolt that was holding in the rod cap. It was in this exact state when we extracted it from the engine. The thread seems to be okay, so the nut must have come loose due to that slack. All the other rods look like they've survived, but we also saw an oil pressure warning light due to a catastrophic loss of pressure. So this here oil pickup tube has a screen on it, which is clogged up with leather debris. We had some pretty huge chunks in there, which I actually had to pick out to get the oil to start dripping down. The entire screen was covered in bits of belt, and as a result, any sort of oil supply to the pump was completely blocked off. So even if that bolt held up, there was still the issue of not having any oil pressure whatsoever, meaning the engine would have died either way. And now we get to the interesting part. I'm sure you're all very curious to see what happened to the belt. And the answer is simple. Check this out, fellows. One of our bearings actually held up more or less okay. Problem is that the groove which supplies oil to the crankshaft is completely blocked off. It's clogged with bits of our belt. Yeah, this doesn't seem to work all that well. I can't imagine how you can drive around or sell your car in this condition. I've heard the stories, of course, but looking at this, I find them pretty hard to believe now. If there's anybody out there who's bought a car like that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to read through your stories. Maybe we're using the wrong leather or the wrong motor oil. Maybe the belt is the wrong thickness. I don't know for sure. The fact of the matter is that this simply doesn't work. Or maybe we shouldn't have used it for all four rods. Perhaps the engine would have lasted a tad longer if we did just one, I don't know. And instead of like 150 meters, we would have been able to drive, well, let's say 1.5 kilometers. Yeah, 1.5 kilometers might even be enough so that you can sell your car. But who knows? It's all a matter of luck. Anyway, fellas, looks like we're done here. You saw everything with your own eyes. We have zero lubrication happening. Make of that what you will. And if anybody out there has been in this sort of situation, go ahead and share your experience. And that's all I have for you. You guys watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.